Hi everyone, so this is update number two about the MSU development. So uh, this week we have had quite a few changes on the code base, so there was a relatively big refactor. Uh, basically, I simplified the code base to make it easier to work with. Um, and yeah, essentially uh, there was a lot of code that was repeating itself as we were going through the tool change process. So I just compacted it in a method and then simply had to call it once, uh, which makes things easier. Uh, on top of that, I've added an extra LCD menu that allows to select the idler position. So in the same way that you're able to select the fill-in position, you now can choose an idler position and the idler will move to that position. This is going to, going to be particularly useful for the servo setup uh, because it's going to be helpful when uh, configuring the servo. So a servo has a limited range of motion and uh, you're going to want to screw the servo in the right position. Um, so that the range of motion can cover all the gear positions. And you can then fine tune that angle uh, with a setting in the firmware that's gonna be coming shortly. So either I'm able to do it tonight uh, or I will be able to do it, uh, let's say next week. Okay, so I'm going to use this update to also talk about Super Slicer. So up till now we have been using Prusa Slicer, uh, which is the slicer that this used with the original MME2. But um, I think that it's a good idea to switch towards um, Super Slicer from now on. And that's because Super Slicer, even if it's, yes, a bit more junky. If you could say it that way, then Super Slicer, it's, a, it's, let's say it's a work in progress. Um, it's a branch, uh, so it's a slicer base of a Prusa slicer, so it's a branch of Prusa slicer that has changes to make it better for multi-material and just regular printing. Uh, and the development is a lot faster paced than Prusa slicer, that's why it has all those new features. But at the same time, the fact that it's so much faster paced uh, means that there are some bugs and some things that are a bit more clunky than what you would see on Prusa slicer that is a lot more polished. Um, but you can still run both slicers, so honestly it's going to be personal preference or what your setup allows you to do because honestly some setup um, are going to require the feature that is included in Super Slicer that is not yet in Prusa Slicer and I don't think will ever be in Prusa Slicer. Um, and it is filament skinny dipping that's basically uh, putting the filament back into the melt zone uh, when doing a tool change and what that allows you to do is um, uh, to reduce stringing by a lot, and um, this helps with clogs and jams. On top of that, you have a lot of nice to have uh, in terms of features for multi-machine 3D printing. Uh, so you have better calculations for the filament, the amount of filament you want to purge after each tool change. Uh, so you have more tuning on that side of things. You also have a tool change specific temperature, so that means they can choose the temperature at which your filament is going to be removed from the nozzle, uh, which is going to be independent from the temperature you're gonna have during a print. And why is that so important? Because some filaments are don't play along well with the MSU, and they tend to be either super stringy or create massive tips. And uh, how you solve that is uh, if you have too much stringing, you increase temperature, uh, you reduce temperature, and you have too big of tips, you increase temperatures. Uh, the problem is sometimes the ideal temperature for the tool change is not the one that you want when you're printing. And that's where that uh, setting comes in, which is actually not available in Prusa Slicer. Uh, that setting is also has quite a lot of nice things on top of it and linked to it. Um, most of it being linked to uh, how you're gonna drop the temperature. So let's say that you're printing at 200 degrees, but want you to do your tool change at 190 degrees Celsius. Uh, you can uh, kick in the fan in order to cool down the hot end much faster. That can cause some problems with uh, thermal runaway, so look out on that. Uh, but honestly, just a lot of nice tools that make working with multi-material uh, models and multi-material putting better overall. So that's why I think that we are going to switch towards Super Slicer. But once again, both can still be an option and it's going to come down to personal preference. And last but not least, we have um, a new merger possibly coming in in the following weeks. So one of the contributors on Discord uh, came up with a new design that looks quite promising in reducing friction. And uh, on top of that, I also have to make the merger a bit more solid uh, because uh, it can actually break under load. And since this thing is in constant load during printing, 
uh, it basically has to hold all the pressure that we're putting in uh, with the MSU and the uh, extruder and um, yeah it can break along the layer lines uh, because there's a really really small fixation point uh, the fix is super easy just print uh, the tubes bigger and the fixation system make it beefier as well uh, so we should see that fix coming pretty soon and um, yeah we may have a new merger designed uh, pretty soon uh, now what is on my plate uh, working on the direct drive setup it's right next to me and uh, I'm really really close to getting it running um, we have the filament flow sensor that one the development has slowed down a little bit um, but it's still on my plate and uh, then just keeping the project going we have a lot more people that are starting to build it uh, on that note if you have a button setup and want to build the MSU for that button setup uh, I would highly recommend and uh, not highly recommend but you can definitely start doing so now the build guide is good enough and just I would say it's ready to go for the button system uh, so definitely join the discord that will have linked down below if you want um, to do so and uh, yeah, so I'm just going to be on the Discord server trying to help people with any bugs or problems that may rise up and with more and more people building this thing it's definitely going to happen because I know that there's probably some uh, bugs or physical issues left somewhere and uh, yeah, the, the goal is going to be to handle those as quickly as possible and to get as many people with a working MSU. I'm really happy we're with where everything's at right now uh, so thanks to everyone that has been following this project and uh, yeah, I hope you all have a wonderful day and see you guys next time.